Now, you would not use binomial theorem for a question like this. You could, if you really wanted to be sitting there for a long time, why wouldn't you use binomial theorem for this? What will you end up with when you expand? You'll get, this is the power of 7, right? Come on, think, Pascal's triangle, how many terms are you going to get? You're going to get 8 terms. Do you really want to go all through that way? I mean, no one remembers the 7th row of Pascal's triangle anyway. So this is going to be a pain. You do not want to expand this. So instead, you should learn from what you used back in differentiation to think, wait, this looks like something familiar. If you were asked to differentiate something like this, it would be quite straightforward. And because integration is very much to do with the reverse of differentiation, you can use this knowledge, right? So normally what would you do if you were differentiating? You would multiply by the power, and then you'd reduce the power by 1. We're integrating, so we're going to do everything in reverse. Okay? We are going to, instead of divide, sorry, instead of reduce, we're going to increase the power. Right? So I should end up with this. Yes, power's gone up. What do I do with this? I'm not going to multiply, I'm going to divide. Now, that's nice for that power, but this is not just differentiation, this is the chain rule, right? So what am I missing? There's the inside, right? When you differentiate something with the chain rule, you multiply by the inside. Well, I'm not differentiating, I am integrating. So instead of multiplying by the inside derivative, I should divide, and in this case, it's a 3. Yes? Are you happy with that? Um, I can simplify that in a second, but before I do, something is missing. Namely, the constant of integration, because of course this is indefinite. Okay? Now just a quick mental check. If you've got that on 24 on the bottom, let's just tidy that up. Will we be able to successfully return to the original integrand if we differentiate? Does it work out? Yes? It should, right? I know it's late in the afternoon, but we got there. You multiply by the 8, which cancels down here. You're also going to multiply by the 3, which gets rid of your denominator entirely. Your power reduces. Everything is fine. Okay? Now, in cases like this, we can pretty much do this in our heads. It's sufficiently small that your brain doesn't get sort of fizzled out by having too many numbers all together in your memory. But when you have a look at some other questions, it rapidly sort of grows out of control. So I'm going to give you two examples. Okay? Here's the first one. Um, here we go. <laughs> Looks like this. Is that a cute? Yep. Okay. So let's have a look at this guy. Now, you can use exactly the same piece of knowledge that we used over here to integrate this guy. You can integrate it. But it looks gross, right? Like, it looks terrible. I suppose we could, if we wanted to, we could do binomial. Up here, you'd get out, there's a power of 3, so how many terms will you get out? You'll get 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. That's somewhat manageable. You could divide everything through by the square root of x, and then you just have a bunch of terms. You could integrate that. It would be fine. Okay? But we can use the chain rule here. It's much faster. Not only is it faster, if I change this 3 back into a 7, it would really be the only practical, reasonable way to do it. Okay? But at the moment, it's kind of like, hmm, what do I do with this thing? I, I don't really know where to begin. There's not just like simple numbers that I can shuffle around. Okay? So therefore, I need my other color. I want to introduce to you, this kind of question will get given to you guys as 2 unit and extension 1 students, as a particular format. I don't have a fancy name for it, so I'm literally going to give you the words that will appear in the question that will give you a cue as to, oh, it's this kind of question. Right? So you will most often see an integral like this paired up with these words. And we see these in HSC questions all the time. You get given an expression, and part one is to differentiate that expression. Part two is then on the basis of that differentiation you just did, now can you integrate this thing that otherwise looks quite intimidating and messy. Okay? So where we're going to begin, so if you want you can call this part one. The differentiate that you're going to be asked to deal with is this guy. Um, do I have a... Yeah, I do. Did I do that right? Sorry, there's a number wrong. That's my number wrong. Okay. Now, 
Because I'm differentiating, I'm much more comfortable with this and you've been practicing chain rule for some time. So you should be able to help me out with this, right? Would you like to do the inside or the outside first? Inside, inside sure, why not? Order doesn't matter in this case. When we do the inside, this is x to the half plus one. Not a trick question. What difference does that plus one make? No difference. Doesn't, doesn't influence the derivative at all because you're just vertically shifting up and down and that doesn't change the gradient, it just changes the position. So it's really just the x to the half that I'm worried about. So when you differentiate it, what do you get? You get that power coming out the front and then you reduce the power by one. How's that? Does that look okay? Remember we're differentiating. Now that you know what differentiating and integrating are, one of the key silly mistakes that students make is forgetting which one you're doing. Is my power going up or is it going down? Okay? You've differentiated the inside. What happens to the outside? It's just an object that's been cubed. So I'm going to multiply by the power, which is 3. And then what am I going to do to the power? It just reduces. Okay. You happy? Is it okay? Uh, this is a bit messy. Let's tidy this guy up, okay? Uh, I've got a half and a three, so I'll write three on two. That's square root x plus one all squared. Where does that belong in the fraction? Top or bottom? Positive power, so that's going to be up the top. Is that okay? This x to the power of negative half really came from this. The original question came in terms of square roots. So rather than leave it in a fractional power, I'm going to return back to square roots. It's a negative a half, so I'm going to put it down the bottom. Are you happy with that? Does that look okay? All right, excellent. 